Hello everyone, let's learn about entropy and how we use this entropy in machine learning. Say you are tossing a coin, which is the perfect coin has no damage. Then you have 50% chance for both sides, and we are so uncertain which side will be shown in next time. Here's the, another example, the coin has both sides has human face. In this case, we are so certain that the next time you will get the human face, 100% sure. Well, here's another example. When you toss a coin has a bias on one human face side, then you have like a 90% for human face and a 10% for one dime text side. In this case, we can say that we have some uncertainty here, which side will be shown when you toss next time. So intuitively, you know that the first example has the highest uncertainty. Second example have the least uh, uncertainty because we are so sure it will be the human face. And this example, we have some uncertainty. How we can measure this one? How we can show just one number, the amount of the uncertainty? That is the entropy. And here's the equation of the Shannon entropy. So I already calculated this Shannon entropy for our examples here. You can see the, the perfect coin has the highest entropy here. We have the one and the second example, lowest entropy, zero. And the third example, we have some entropy in between, right? So this is the entropy showing the number and the number is representing the amount of the uncertainty. Well, tossing a coin is the binary classification and the binary classification has the entropy between 0 to 1. What if your classification is for the 8 classes, then the, you have the maximum entropy as 3. What if you have the 16 classes, then the, you will have the maximum entropy 4. You may see the pattern here like the 16 is a 2 to the power of 4 and the 8 is 2 to the power of 3. So you can easily get the maximum entropy from this equation as well. Well, importantly, where do we use the entropy in the machine learning? Well, there are many places actually, but here is most popular two examples. First is the building a decision tree, and second is the active learning. Well, here's the example. So we have the data, person data here. We're going to predict if this person is a male or female, and then we have two features here. If this person is a soldier, or if this person has a long hair. Well, when you build a decision tree, most importantly, you need to select a more relevant one earlier than the less relevant one. So which feature is more relevant, is soldier or long hair? Intuitively, you can know that the is soldier is more relevant here because if you see the, the left side and right side from the is soldier, uh, left side only have the man and the right side only have female. So it distinguishes clearly. So there's not many uncertainty here. Look at the right side, the long hair. If you should see the right side of the long hair, there are three men and the two females there. So it distinguishes not quite well. So I expect something higher entropy from here. So you can calculate the entropy for each case and you just add these two entropy from one feature then the total entropy will be 0 for the each soldier and the 0.966 for the long hair. Since long hair has a higher entropy, we will select the age soldier because this one is distinguishing more clearly, more relevant feature. Alright, the second example of the entropy in machine learning is active learning. Say you have the machine learning model classifying the sentence to uh, happy or unhappy. So this is sentiment classifying. So when you say I love you, the model is saying it's happy, I'm angry, it's unhappy, I'm sad, unhappy. When you say I am feeling blue, it's supposed to be the unhappy, but the model uh, predicted as happy. So th this is wrong case here. So say if this is the version one model, if we want to improve this model, how will you improve this model? We can use the active learning and you can use the entropy for this active learning. Say you collected all the real user data query, then you have this kind of database here. I love you, have the confidence on the happy 99%. I'm angry, you have 95%, which is good. But I am sad, you have like 70% for the I am sad unhappy. We want to improve to have more confidence on it. And I am feeling blue, this is even worse because it has 60% very less confidence on happy. So we want to improve this one as well to go to the unhappy with high confidence here. How you can do it? 
first you can just label on this data and put this old data into next training. But we have just four examples here, but in real scenario, you may have like millions of data here. So you will spend a lot of money for the human labeling. So let's find something another way. So if we only filter out only informative data from here and put in next training, then you can save a lot of money from the human labeling as well as you can uh, reduce duplicate data from your trained data set because in your real data query, actually, your trained data already covers a lot of things. So you only filter only informative data. That is the key. In this case, you can use the entropy here. Say if you calculate the entropy, you can see I love you and I'm angry has the very short, small entropies here while the I am said I am feeling blue has a higher entropy. So you can set up the threshold here and just filter out high entropies here. So we now have only I am set and I am feeling blue. So you give this data to the human labeler and the labeler can label on this data and put this new data into your existing train data and train your model again. That is your version 2 model. So let's see. The version 2 model now can predict I am set as unhappy with higher confidence as you can see here. And I am feeling blue is now going to the unhappy which is right with also very high confidence. This is the active learning with entropy. I hope you enjoyed entropy and how we use entropy in the machine learning and I will see you on the next video. Thank you.